Hello, in this demonstration, I am going to attempt to combine two paintings. I'm calling this basically conceptual blending. I'm taking two different pieces. I'm gonna cut the top one apart and I'm gonna try and integrate it and combine it with my background to create a third thing. I don't know what that third thing's gonna look like. Um, and I'm doing this because with mixed media, we're constantly trying, the focus is on how to integrate materials. Easier said than done. And I think all of us have so many of these little studies or jelly prints and what do we do with them? So I am going to cut and rip these apart and combine. Um, so I'm looking at this top piece, it's on a piece of canvas paper, which I can cut or I can rip. I'm gonna do a bit of both. So you see um, the difference. So, and I'm looking right here, this area looks kind of interesting to me. So I'm just gonna fold that increase this one I'm going to rip because I'll get kind of a frayed edge and then I think I'm going to rip it here again I can just have fun doing this not really thinking it through too much I want different pieces this one I'm going to do a straight cut I want a variety of edges and because we generate so much of this stuff, I'm hoping um, people won't be so attached. It's like, well, I've got a whole box of that, so who cares? Okay, rip, rip, some bigger pieces, some smaller pieces. Got a little narrow piece there. Okay. Now, got all, you can think of them as puzzle pieces. Now what I do is I start moving them around in the page. And usually what I do is I try and form a connection. And oftentimes that is through um, some sort of a line. So like this brush mark seems to hook up with this line. That's a possible connection. I've got these marks, which kind of go with those marks. That's a possible connection. So I'm playing here. I'm just seeing what might want to line up. These kind of connect there. These pieces are feeling a little bit big to me. Kind of like that. And some of the pieces may go off the page, um, which could be interesting. And then I end up gluing it on a larger sheet of paper, or I could crop that down later. So this is kind of lining up with this swoosh right here. Things can overlap. That's feeling a little crowded to me. This takes time. It takes time and fiddling with it. So you have to think about it. It's not just a matter of, I'm just going to plop this down and hope for the best. Got to take some time to see where things want to line up. 
kind of liking that, liking that. I'm liking the open space over here. Not sure about that. Kind of liking this connect right here. Okay, you know what? For simplicity's sake, I think I'm just going to go with maybe those three things. I like that I've got some breathing room over here. I like this going off slightly. Maybe there's a smaller piece over here, like teeny tiny. So playing with the scale. Okay. I'm going to do this for starters. And um, I'm going to use, normally I'd use Mod Podge. I was fiddling with this this uh, gloss gel that I got from when the golden rep came. So I am going to, it's thicker. I kind of, I like it. Um, I'm gonna put some of my palette paper there. And I'm going to use this foam brush. And you can put it on one or two sides. Two seems pretty good. I'm going to put that down. And I can do my sheet of deli paper and my scraper over that so that it adheres really nicely and then go on to my next piece remember where those pieces were. I think I want this down right about there. I'll trim that other edge off. Okay, this is going to be here. going to put this little piece down here. I think maybe over there. You know what? I'm not sure yet, but I like there being a smaller piece there. Okay. Now I have some decisions to make. If I'm doing a piece that has a bunch of pieces coming off the edge and I like that. I kind of like it breaking the frame. I could glue this whole piece down to a white sheet of Bristol board. Another choice, which I think I like it the way it is, but another choice would you could get some strips of paper. Hang on, let me move this over here. Strips of paper and uh, just crop it though. Okay, so what if I almost like I'm making a little um frame, right? So I could play with actually it's better if I just put straight strips down. I can play with, you know, I could crop it in this close. That's quite different. Not saying that's what I want, but I'm playing with the composition a little. So I kind of like this sharp line going right to the edge. 
I like this part breaking out. So I can move these sheets of paper up and down and decide if I do want to crop it, where, where would that be? Where would it be? So I like this breaking out. I like this coming right to the edge. I kind of don't know if I want that blue right there. So the question is, would I cut it there? That seems a little bit cutting it short. So these are the things you can play with. We will also be playing with this in the future, making small viewfinders. Actually, you know what? You could do it today. You could make a whole piece like this and you could make a small viewfinder and go around and go, there's a small composition. You could trace it with a pencil, cut it out, there's a small composition. There's a small composition. Okay. Um, and, and cut those out and those would be pieces or I'm just flying by the seat of my pants right now. I'm going to do this. I'm going to outline this. And I'm going to take this in another direction. So going to outline this charcoal pencil and you can make different size viewfinders. Pencil might be better, but here we go, charcoal. Find the area that I like. I think I have a bigger viewfinder here somewhere. Here we go. And sometimes they're too big. Like, mm, I don't want that much showing. Maybe up here. I'm going to use it up here. Okay, I'm going to use it right here. I find this section. I want to save that. And then I'll go to the smaller one over here. So I've got three points of interest in this painting. Now what I can do is maybe I'll come in here with um, similar color, like a background wash to push these sections back and sort of highlight these windows. I have no idea what this is gonna look like. I'm gonna give that a go. And Still don't know about that little piece. It'll have to wait. Okay. Okay, I'm just debating now what color to put in here. Do I go blue? Do I take it a completely different direction. I've got this acrylic burnt umber ink, Van Dyke Brown. And a big part of this is I couldn't entirely plan this ahead of time, so I don't really know. I think I'm going to go with this transparent burnt sienna acrylic ink. I'm going to add a little. I'm going to lighten this up start out light okay so i'm going to go in here So 
So I'm trying to integrate this material with this background. And now I'm adding uh, paint, transparent paint, to kind of highlight those windows. I don't want to completely get rid of that initial blue. Okay, I'm gonna do, I like that it's still transparent. I think I'll come in with something a little more opaque and actually block some things out. And I'm, I'm here, bear with me, trying to find the blue. Can't really find the one I want. You know, it's going to be wild. I'm going to go, well, looking at the cobalt teal. Okay, we'll go with the light phthalo blue. Okay, so some of the areas I could also come in and go, so this is thicker, this is more impasto. So actually blocking out certain areas What I'm trying to do is still focus, create focus on these windows. Or I think I will stop there, except if I can find it, I was going to do some scraffito in there. So if the paint is really thick, I can come in. It's already drying. Okay. working there. I can see the color showing through. I'm trying to create a sense of I'm going with the movement that I see there in those pieces I added. Okay, so that's my attempt. That's my attempt to integrate um, two different uh, paintings that I had made by cutting, arranging, lining up, um, whatchamacall, making connections, forming connections through lines that I saw, gluing them down, integrating with more transparent washes, and then going over with um, opaque colors. If you do not wish to do abstract, you could you could still do this process, try to integrate these materials. You could use it as a background for um, something recognizable, or you could even integrate imagery within the piece. Okay, hope that helps. And that's it.